Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Hannah and I am a nutrition educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County. Today on What Can I Cook With? A show where you give me your ingredient suggestions and I show you things you can cook with them. Today we will be making a simple ramen from scratch. So no flavor packet is needed. In this version, I will be using a low sodium broth, adding in lots of flavorings and lots of veggies, a lean protein and a fiber rich noodle, noodle alternative. So this is a really great way to create a delicious meal that will leave you feeling satisfied. Because I don't know about you, but whenever I've had packaged ramen, it feels like 30 minutes later, I'm hungry again. Uh, and a lot of times I've used the whole flavor package and that will give you at least 50% of your daily recommended amount of sodium. So also side note, I don't know if any of you have ever read the back of packaged ramen before, but the ones that I've gotten and read the back on, those little packets are supposed to be two servings. And those little flavoring packets, one serving is supposed to be a quarter teaspoon of that. So if you're using the whole packet, you would need to multiply all those numbers on the back by four. So the one I had, I think it was 32% of your daily recommended amount of sodium. Multiply by four, it's over 120% of your daily recommended amount of sodium. So consuming that much in the short term can leave you feeling bloated and sluggish. And in the long term can increase your risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. So it's a really great area where you can try to reduce your risk by reducing your sodium intake. Uh, and this is a great meal to recreate that classic kind of ramen packet flavor. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start with the broth so that can get going. And then I'll move on and show you what else we've got going on here. So speaking of sodium, you want to make sure that you're choosing a low sodium option. So I have a low sodium beef broth here, got about five cups of it. You could use chicken broth, veggie broth, whatever you have on hand just trying to make sure it's a low sodium option because that's another way that you can get um, too much sodium in your day is uh, in sometimes these pre-made broths. So we've got that going on there. I've got five cloves of minced garlic here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. If you're not a garlic fan, you could reduce it down to maybe a clove or two. If you really love garlic and want a super garlicky broth, you can absolutely increase that amount of garlic. I will say though, if you're not a garlic fan, um, it does cook and so it won't be as spicy in the finished product. So I do recommend adding at least a little bit for a flavor. Get that going. Then I'm gonna add in some ground ginger. My roommate was in charge of our grocery shopping this week and could not find the fresh ginger. So we'll be using uh, ground today. Uh, one teaspoon of this. If you can find it, I highly recommend fresh grated ginger. It's gonna give you a much more kind of robust taste. You would want about a tablespoon of uh, ground fresh ginger, grated fresh ginger. Uh, it's usually in the produce section if you're ever looking for it. It's usually refrigerated. It's kind of like a gnarly brown root. All right, and then I'm gonna add in some low sodium soy sauce, again, trying to choose low sodium when we can, one tablespoon. A soy sauce alter alternative, if you have um, soy sensitivity or are looking to reduce your sodium intake a little bit more, you can look for liquid aminos. A lot of times those um, also have a reduced um, sodium content. However, there are liquid aminos that are made from soy, so Make sure you look out for that if that's what your, your sensitivity is. So I just added one tablespoon of rice cooking wine. You could also add in rice wine vinegar or just plain rice vinegar for the same kind of flavor. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a tablespoon of sesame seed oil. So this is one of my favorite oils because you just need a little bit and it packs in a lot of flavor. I'm adding in a teaspoon of this. The other great thing about this recipe is it can be scaled up or down very easily depending on how many people you're trying to feed. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil with the lid on. 
So if you're just making it for one, looking at a size of broth that might be good for you, maybe it's a cup, um, whatever works for how many people you're feeding, you can pretty easily scale it up and down uh, based by looking at it. So that's gonna go ahead and come up to a boil for a little bit, let all the flavors meld and mix together. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in some other ingredients. So as I mentioned before, my roommate did the shopping and this is what he brought back for ramen noodles. We have some black soybean spaghetti. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. Uh, you can use ramen noodles that come in the packet if you have some of those. You could use udon noodles or soba noodles if you find those or uh, ramen noodles they're starting to have fresh at stores as well. If you're interested, the difference between soba and udon noodles is udon are wheat and they're usually like white, thicker, a little bit chewy, whereas soba noodles are made with buckwheat. So they're a little bit nuttier. They'll actually bring some more flavor to the dish, whereas the udon kind of take on the flavor of your um, broth. So whatever you're interested in. So I don't think I mentioned, I am am monitoring the chat box, so please feel free to type in any questions and I'll try to answer them as we go along. All right, so once this comes up to a boil, I'm gonna add in my noodles. When you're choosing noodles, no matter what kind they are, if it's an option to read the nutrition facts label and look for a higher, higher fiber option, that will give you a little bit more um, satiety once you eat it, fill you up a little bit more. All right, and then after my noodles are going, I have some veggies that I'm going to add. Actually, this just came to a boil, so I'm gonna add in those noodles, and then I'll talk to you about our veggies. So you're just gonna cook, cook your noodles based on the package directions. So this one says it's about six minutes. Didn't realize these were packaged so well. I would have opened up and do, wouldn't let you see me struggle with it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add these in. All right, give them a good stir, make sure they are all submerged. So again, the amount of broth that you use just kind of depends on what noodles you're using. You want it to be enough to just cook the noodles. So the veggies I have going on. In about three minutes, once these noodles kind of get starting to get cooked, but they're not completely cooked, I'm gonna add in my veggies that need to get cooked. So I've got some sliced mushrooms here. I have a thawed, this was a frozen blend, but it's thawed and it's a stir, stir fry blend. So it's got carrots and bell peppers and broccoli and peas and some water chestnuts just to add some extra veggies to this dish. You could use whatever you have on hand. I'm also gonna be adding in some spinach, which will uh, wilt down and get really creamy and mix throughout the ramen, right? Uh, instead of the mushrooms, so I'll show you how I prepared the mushrooms. I used fresh baby Bellas. You could use whatever you see at the store. But for mushroom preparing, the best way to clean them is actually with a paper towel or a dishcloth that you've gotten slightly damp and you just want to be wiping it off to get the dirt off. It doesn't matter as much for this recipe because they're all going to go into a pot of water, but if you're cooking something else uh, where you saute the mushrooms, if you rinse them with water, they're going to absorb too much of it and it's going to make your dish too watery. So again, for this one, it didn't matter super much. I could have rinsed them. I just wanted to show you how you wipe them down. I usually remove the stem because I find them to be a little bit woody. You can see it's kind of crumbling. It's not gonna be very soft. If you have mushrooms that the stem looks good and soft, feel free to use those. And then I'll just show you, I sliced it like this. You also have the option for using canned mushrooms if you wanted to. The one thing I would say about using canned vegetables in general is you want to rinse them before using them. Canned vegetables can be another source of sodium, which if you've guessed by now, we're trying to look out for with this dish. All right, so I'm just gonna give you the stir, make sure 
my noodles aren't clumping. I'm gonna give them a feel. They are softening up a little bit. So you can see they're, they're draping down around. They're not stiff anymore. So I'm gonna add in my mushrooms because those ones need a little bit more time to cook. So this was one whole package of mushrooms. I think it was about eight ounces. You could use less than that. If you just have a little bit in your fridge, just throw them in here. Just give it a stir, get your mushrooms kind of submerged. So then the other things I'm gonna be adding is I um, have some shredded chicken that was left over from taco night, just plain unseasoned chicken. I'll throw that in there for some lean protein. And then I also soft boiled some eggs. So I really love having soft boiled eggs on, on my ramen. There is one thing to note though, because their internal temperature doesn't reach 160 degrees when it um, was boiling, they do have the same risk of foodborne illnesses as like a medium rare steak or raw shellfish. So if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or otherwise immune compromised, I would full boil it um, and make sure that you kind of are decreasing that risk. So, so I will show you what I mean by soft boil. To make these, you boil water in a saucepan enough to cover the eggs. And then you put the eggs in once it becomes boiling and cook them for seven and a half minutes exactly. And they'll come up with this really nice texture. You can see it's kind of jammy inside there. I think it tastes really nice with the ramen. Um, but again, you could do a hard boiled egg. You could leave the egg out completely if you're not a fan. Doing whatever you feel like. Um, this is so customizable. Whatever veggies you have in your fridge, whatever protein source, if you have some leftover steak, um, if you have some shrimp, something like that, just adding your cooked protein in with enough time to just warm up is a great way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my thawed veggie blend just so it will warm up as well since these are looking cooked. This is more of a, if you can't tell, this is more of a, a pantry ramen than it would be a, a really authentic ramen, but it can still kind of satisfy those cravings and give you a way to use up packaged ramen noodles and any little bits of veggies or protein that you have in your fridge. That's cooking for a little bit more. I'll show you what I have to go on top of our ramen bowls. So I mentioned I have the eggs to throw on there. I also have some grated carrots. I like throwing these on because they add a nice little bit of crunch to the dish. So you have your really nice, soft, slurpy noodles and your veggies are getting kind of melty and the carrots kind of give you that, that alternating texture to go with it. Some other good toppings are gonna be things like maybe uh, diced bell peppers, if you enjoy kimchi, which is uh, pickled cabbage and fermented cabbage, that would be good, um, seaweed, would also kind of give you some more, some different flavors in there. Uh, though again, seaweed can be high in sodium too. So if you're consuming that, making sure to choose a lower sodium option if available or limiting your intake of it. All right, so this is looking pretty soft. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste test. Especially because I've never cooked with these noodles before. I wanna make sure I'm, I'm testing them and seeing if they're done. Almost there. So with ramen, because it is kind of a broth based noodle dish, the noodles will continue to cook in the broth even after you turn off the stove. So you do want them to be fairly al dente. You don't want them to be too mushy. So let me lift you up so you can see what this looks like. All right. 
And you can see all my veggies are, are mixing in really well. I'm gonna add my spinach in just a few moments. I just don't want it to get too overdone. But I am gonna try to make this ramen bowl look kind of like my plate. So if you're familiar with it, making your meal half fruits and vegetables, I want that to be kind of what this looks like. So go ahead and add in my spinach. You could use another leafy green would be really good as well. So bok choy would be a little more uh, traditional. You could add in some sliced kale. If you're adding in kale or maybe a tougher leafy green, um, collard greens or something like that, you'd want to add them in a little bit sooner so they have more time to cook and break down because we want kind of all of these ingredients to cook, to be cooked at the, to the correct temperature at the same time. We want it to all finish together. I guess is the better way of saying that. If anyone's watching and has cooked spinach, you know how much it, it breaks down. So I'm just gonna add in a few more handfuls. Oops. Excuse me. I was teaching a family snacking class before this and our finished product is ready to come out of the oven. So let me show you what that is actually. So that family cooking class is every Thursday at 4.45 if you're interested in joining. The Facebook event information is on the CCE Jefferson Facebook page. So this time we made apple bars and they're smelling pretty delicious and I think will be a pretty fantastic dessert for our ramen. Something's over here pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give my ramen noodles another try. See how they're doing. All right, I go through so many tasting forks in this process. <laughs> That's okay. One of the, the tips to working in the kitchen is the chef doesn't clean up unless you live alone and then you should probably do some cleaning up. But if you can entice other folks to do the cleanup for you in exchange for delicious meals, highly recommend it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my shredded chicken just so it warms up. I'm actually not gonna add all of this in because that seems like kind of a lot. This is gonna be a really, a really dense meal. If you want it more brothy, more watery, you know, making sure that you're adding more broth at the beginning and less of these kind of inclusions. But really doing whatever floats your boat. Make it a different way each time you make it. It doesn't have to be kind of the same old flavors. Another vegetable that I'm just thinking about adding in is I think like edamame or soybeans would be good in here as well. You could add in some cooked beans, like if you have cooked red beans, add those in here. It might kind of start turning into more of a minestrone, but you know, that's part of the fun of being in the kitchen is trying new things, experimenting with new ingredients and just kind of playing around. You know, we eat three meals a day. There's some room in there for, for trying new things. Give you one more peek at what this looks like. All right, so you can see here, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in this dish. This is going to be a very filling ramen, and you could definitely add more broth 
kind of spread it out, have it for multiple meals, feel, feed a lot of people. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and we'll be good to eat. Thank you so much for joining with me to learn how to cook some ramen from scratch. I hope you go ahead and try it. And if you do, please share a picture with us. Um, we'd love to see what creations you make and, and how you adapt it and make it your own. As I mentioned before, we have a family cooking class every Thursday at 445. I will be back with what can I cook with on Monday. I forget what time, but it is on the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County Facebook page. I will be cooking with quinoa. Awesome. Thank you, Anne, for chiming in. I hope that you get to use these ideas at home. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Have an excellent Thursday and a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next week.